factors that affect the rate of chemical reactions. Now, in the previous video in this playlist, we spoke about the collision theory that speaks about the criteria that needs to be put in place for an effective collision to take place, which will then result in a reaction. And these are the things that if we manipulate them or change them, this will change the speed at which a reaction takes place. So if a reaction takes place quickly or slowly, how fast or how slow reactants get converted into products. And we will go through these and we'll speak about it in the context of the collision theory, because you need to be able to explain how each of these factors affect the rate of a chemical reaction in terms of the collision theory. Now, first things first, just keep in the back of your mind that if we increase the number of effective collisions, not just collisions, effective collisions per unit time, then we will increase the rate of reaction. My first factor is temperature of the reaction mixture. So you will recall that if we have an identical situation, so identical container, same type of substance, same number of particles, same concentration, all of that, the one is at a lower temperature, the one is at a higher temperature. What that changes fundamentally when we're speaking about temperature is the average kinetic energy of the particles. So the lower the temperature, the lower the average, lower the average kinetic energy of the particles. You just need to connect in your mind Average kinetic energy is related to temperature. So lower average kinetic energy, lower temperature, the molecules are moving around slower. Think about it. There will be less collisions. They won't bump into each other as frequently. Therefore, less effective collisions per unit time. So the rate of reaction here will be lower. Versus over here, higher temperature, higher kinetic energy energy of particles, average kinetic energy. And then what is important to say is that the kinetic energy of the particles will then, there will be more, more particles, more particles with a kinetic energy that is greater than or equal to the activation energy. Remember, according to the collision theory, it's all about the number of particles that have energy, kinetic energy that is greater than or equal to the activation energy. So in this situation, the particles have lower kinetic energy, lower average kinetic energy. Therefore, there won't be very many particles that have energy, kinetic energy that is bigger than the activation energy. But in this scenario over here, the average kinetic energy is higher. So there will be more particles with kinetic energy that is greater than or equal to the activation energy. And what that means for a higher temperature scenario is that there will be more effective collisions per unit time and therefore a higher rate of reaction. And remember, what is important to say when you speak about it in terms of the collision theory is you have to mention effective collisions, not just collisions, and you have to say per unit time. So this is how I would explain it in terms of the collision theory. And it does just make sense. In a hotter situation, hotter reaction mixture, these particles have lots of energy. They're bouncing off of each other. They are colliding. They will just be more effective collisions per unit time. My next factor that I'm going to be speaking about is the surface area, okay? And this is of our solid reactants. So if we have a solid, like a zinc tablet, for example, versus zinc powder, one of them will result in a higher rate of reaction. And that would be the powder over the tablet. Think about, about it like this. This over here, let's say this is the tablet form, okay? Tablet. And this, can you see they've broken up the tablet? So instead of having the solid blue situation over there, they've broken it up. Here you see a little blue, 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 blue. So this would be maybe more like powder form. So what happens when we do this is we are increasing the surface area. So let's look at the red substance that is reacting with the blue substance. In version number one, or in situation number one, it has a lower surface area and the reason why is because there's not a lot of points of contact for this red to react with this blue sure it can collide with the outer part of the blue but it can't get inside here but if i break it up then it can react at all angles can you see that we are increasing the surface area here's another nice visual that helps me you know visualize this so you can see here i've got the one this gray reactant over here as a solid unit that would be like a tablet you can see here the green is reacting with it's colliding with the gray so think of it as two different reactants sure it can react in certain places but it can't get 
inside, in between the little components. But when we increase the surface area, so when you take the tablet and you grind it up into powder, you break it up into little bits and pieces, then we get a situation like this. And a lot more effective collisions can take place. Can you see? Because we've increased the surface area. Same sort of thing over here. We've got one solid piece over here. Yes, collisions can take place, but when we break it up, a lot more effective collisions can take place over here. So, and if you think about it, that's why sometimes if you take powdered medication or a powdered form of a tablet, it can react faster. Maybe it can help with your headache a bit faster than a solid tablet. It's because of this. So, the larger surface area increases the rate of reaction and it might make no sense to you. You might think, so ma'am, you're telling me that if I break it up into lots of small pieces, my surface area is bigger. Yes, because instead of just reacting along the outer edges, we can react all along these surface area edges when we break up the blue. I hope that makes sense. So just remember when we create powder, when we have smaller grains, it has a larger surface area. And it's the increase in surface area that increases the number of collisions per unit time. You can see here, there's a lot more collisions taking place over here versus over here. So the more collisions that take place, the more effective collisions that take place per unit time, and that then increases the rate of reaction. So again, in terms of the collision theory, you can see how I'm mentioning number of effective collisions per unit time. My next factor is concentration. And now this would be concentration of solutions. So remember solution is when you dissolve a solute in a solvent. So you're dissolving something, the number of moles of something, say for example, in a certain volume of water, you create a solution with a known concentration. I can increase the concentration of that solution. How do I do that? I increase in number of moles. Can you tell in these two photos, situation number one, situation number two, the volume is the same. One cubic decimeter, one cubic decimeter. The size of this black box here is the same, representing the same volume. But in situation number one, I have a lower concentration. Why? Because I have fewer particles per unit volume. My N, my number of particles per unit volume is lower. So situation number two would be a higher concentration. Look inside the box. There's more particles per unit volume. Now, obviously, think about it. What would happen if you have more particles per unit volume? Well, you will have more particles that will have a kinetic energy that is greater than or equal to the activation energy. So here we have very few particles. So there won't be very many particles whose kinetic energy is greater than or equal to the activation energy. Maybe only a few. A few particles will have that. So there will be very few effective collisions per unit time. But here, because there's more particles, there will be more particles that have enough kinetic energy with kinetic energy greater than or equal to the activation energy. There will be more particles. And remember, the more particles you have with enough energy and with correct orientation, there's more collisions, more effective collisions per unit time, which increases the rate of the reaction. So that is how I would describe it. There's an increase in the number of particles, which just means that there will be more particles that have the correct criteria that we mentioned in the previous video. It's very, very important to note that learners need to be made aware of the fact that increasing the volume of a solution does not affect the concentration in the context of this, okay? So it is all about changing the number of particles, changing the concentration. We not If you change the volume of a solution, then it's not going to do anything, okay? The only time when changing volume has an effect is in the context of gases because gases in gases if we decrease the volume we increase the pressure so say for example i have one two three four little particles in this volume let's say this volume is one cubic decimeter versus i halve the volume now same number of particles i don't know if that's half that doesn't look really like half let's say like that <laughs> one two three four okay that's not exactly half but you know what i mean we're halving the volume that increases the pressure. So if we decrease volume, that increases the pressure. That's from Boyle's law from last year. They are inversely proportional. So in the context of gases, if we increase the pressure or decrease the volume, 
that causes the particles to be a lot closer to each other. You can see in this picture, the particles are a lot closer than in this picture, which means that there'll be more collisions and more effective collisions per unit time. So the only time volume comes into play, the only time volume affects the rate of reaction is in the context of gases, not solutions. Okay, so that's how I would explain pressure. But remember, this is just for gases. When we speak about concentration, it's for solutions. And volume, changing the volume does not impact that for solutions. And just remember that for surface area, it's for solids. Okay. And then we have the catalyst. Now, I will do an entire separate video on catalysts and rates of reaction and catalysts. But you should know that a catalyst increases the rate of a chemical reaction by decreasing the activation energy. So if we take a look at this graph over here, which you should be familiar with from grade 11 and other videos in this playlist, this is the activation energy. So from reactants over here to the activated complex, that's the activation energy without a catalyst, no catalyst. When we add a catalyst, it decreases the activation energy. Can you see this little arrow over here? That is the activation energy with a catalyst. Okay, you can see that the little peak of the graph is lower. So when we add a catalyst, it decreases the activation energy. And what happens if we decrease the activation energy? Remember, one of our criteria according to the collision theory for a successful reaction to take place is that the kinetic energy of the particles must be greater than or equal to the activation energy. Now, if we have a very big activation energy, let's say it's 700, then maybe we won't have a lot of particles that have a kinetic energy that is greater than or equal to 700. Maybe it's very difficult to get uh, molecules that have that much kinetic energy. But as soon as we add a catalyst, what happens is it decreases the activation energy. Instead of 700, let's say it becomes 400. That's not a very high number. Maybe there are more particles that will then have enough energy, enough kinetic energy that is greater than or equal to 400. So when we decrease the activation energy, we are decreasing the minimum kinetic energy that the particles need to have. So we're basically making it easier. It's kind of like if someone says the pass mark is 50%, okay? Or let's say they had to say to you tomorrow, okay, everybody, we're changing the pass mark for physical sciences to 70%. There's going to be a lot less students that are able to pass because 70%, that's a high number to get. But if they decrease the pass mark required, let's say they decrease it to 30%, there will be more of the people that will have enough marks to pass. It's the same thing. So by lowering the activation energy, more molecules will have sufficient kinetic energy that is equal to or greater than the activation energy. This increases the number of effective collisions per unit time, which increases the rate of reaction. So this is how you explain it. Lower the activation energy, more particles have kinetic energy that is equal to or greater than the activation energy. Please write it out in full sentences. This is just for me to summarize it for you. Therefore, more effective collisions per unit time. And I think what's very important for people to realize is that when we add a catalyst, so if I say I'm adding a catalyst, that doesn't suddenly give the particles more energy. So by you adding a catalyst, it's not like the particles are suddenly going to be having a lot more energy. No, that's not what happens. What it does is it lowers the energy needed. So it's like adding a catalyst doesn't give everybody more marks, but it lowers the pass mark that you need to pass the subject. Does that, I hope that that makes sense. And the last thing that influences the rate of the reaction is the nature of the reactants. So the types of reactants that we are dealing with. So some compounds, just because of how they are, how they are structured, how the electron configuration looks, all of those things, they are just more reactive than others. So it says here, simple particles like atoms or ions will react faster than something that is more complicated. Inorganic substances react faster than organic substances. Gases and ions in solution react faster than solids and liquids. And smaller little molecules react faster than bigger molecules. So these things are just, that's just how the particles are. It's just their nature. It's just how they were made. And for those of you that made it all the way to the end of the video, you are all amazing. You are all my favorites. And here is a summary for you because you've made it this far. Comment down below if you are one of the ones that have made it this far. That is my summary. 
that basically summarizes all of this. So if they ask you in a test or an exam to discuss why a certain factor that affects the rate of reaction, how does that increase the rate of reaction? And you have to speak about it in terms of the collision theory. There it is. There's your summary. That's what you will say. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Comment down below what else you'd like to see. Subscribe if you have not yet. And I'll see you for the rest of the section and more sections. Just check out the links below. Bye, everybody.